Okay, well I said I would make new episodes of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop whenever I have a reason to, and now I have a reason to. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. You might remember this take deck from way back in the Caveman YouTube times. My Denon DRS-810. Well, I just got this out of storage, because I wanted to use it again. And to my utter disappointment, I found it doesn't work anymore. So we've got a very sick tape recorder. Now, it powers up just fine. And as you can see, the display is working. The buttons all seem to be doing their thing. MPX works, or it would do if I had the Dolby turned on. So you can see that's working. Tape size select works. Remaining time works, or at least, well, needs to play a bit of the tape in order to get that. But memory works, and so does counter reset. If I press reset, there's the zero. Fast forward works. As you can see, it's now counting up in minutes and seconds which is a really nice feature you don't see on many tape recorders. Rewind also works. As you can see. The problem is, this will not play. And I mean, at all. It'll play for a few seconds, and then it'll stop. Plus, no sound. If I press play, we get nothing. Counter's going, but no audio. So it plays for a few seconds and then just stops. Okay, we're going to try and do a recording on this and see if it even records anything. Now, I've got the line output of this connected up to my Philips N4308 reel to reel, and I'm just using that as an amplifier. So. If this thing is giving any output at all, we will hear it come out of the reel-to-reel, -reel. so... Let's try a player tape. And just like before, absolutely nothing. Now, over here, I've got one of my microphone preamps. And I've got that connected into the input of this tape recorder. So I'm going to put this into source. I'm going to switch, put the tape monitor over to source. And okay, okay. It's definitely passing a signal. Uh, I'm just going to turn the volume. Actually, uh, let's turn the input level down. Well, that was definitely getting through. Still don't know if it's going to make a recording though. Let's put it onto source. Adjust my volume here. It's a bit noisy in this room because I've got the fan on because it's quite a warm day. Which is just the way I like it. But anyway, I'm going to speak into the microphone. And, yep, level meters are moving when I speak into the microphone. And I can hear myself coming out through the reel-to-reel. -reel. So, let's see if we can make a recording. Okay, so I have a freshly rewound tape. I did it actually rewinding this. I've just wound it past the leader. So, we'll have a recording right at the beginning of the tape. If this makes a recording at all. I'll pick up the microphone here. Just make sure my levels are good. I'm going to record. And... Let's try to make a test recording. Don't see any audio coming out. Let's put it onto tape monitor. Okay, still getting sound coming through on the tape monitor. And, yep. On record, it's doing the same thing as it's doing when it plays. Stops after about eight seconds. Okay, well, since we know we're not gonna get any playback out of this thing, or at least not yet, I'm going to play the tape back in another tape deck, 
So now I've got this one connected up to the reel-to-reel. -reel. So let's put that tape in and see if we've got anything. Seems to be squeaking in there. Okay, I'm not going to do that. But I am going to attempt to make modern music. Okay, that is not what I recorded. Although I'm pretty much a hundred percent sure that it will still sound like garbage. Okay, so here we are under the hood. Now, I've had a look to see if the tape is getting jammed at all, and it isn't. If I put a tape in, I've removed the little thing that holds the tape down, so you can see if the tape is moving or not. So I'm going to press rewind and fast forward. You can see there's no trouble fast forwarding. There's no trouble rewinding. And there's no trouble playing. The tape appears to be moving as it normally would, so that's one thing we can take off the list. Another suspicion might have been that insects or moisture could have gotten into the circuit board and corroded it, but I just had a look on the other side of the circuit board, and that's absolutely fine. No signs of corrosion or anything like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do one of the first ten commandments of electronics troubleshooting and that is thou shalt check voltages. So I'm going to start with the power supply which is over here. Now fortunately it's got a few of the voltages marked. We've got a positive and negative 12 volt rail there and on the other side of this cable we've got some more voltages. Now, I'm not sure what all these voltages are supposed to be. I mean, there's one here that says plus 6 volts, that's pretty obvious. And there's one there that says minus 22 volts. But apart from that and those two 12 volt rails, I don't know what those other voltages should be. So I'm just going to test those particular ones that are labelled and see if they're at what they say they should be. Okay, I'm sure this one object to having my meter just stuffed in there. So I've got the got the minus the meter just connected to a ground. And let's see what some of these voltages are. Well, first I'll check that negative 22 volts. Let's see what we've got there. It should be this pin here. And we've got negative 27. That's a little high but I'm gonna let that go. And on the sixth one up, that should be plus six volts. So, two, three, four, five, six. It should be about here. Yeah, that one's right on the money. So that's good. Okay. Now those two 12 volt rails. I'm gonna have to go over to this side will be a little bit easier to get to them. Let's see this one. Okay, that's the 6 volt rail. Where's the 12 volt rail? Okay, we're getting about 14.3 volts there, but I'm gonna say that's still okay. And this one, 15.4. Again, I'm going to say that's okay because it's still within the ballpark, although it's off by a couple of volts. I don't expect all those voltage rails to be right on the money, but because they're putting out a voltage that is approximately the voltage they should be, I'm going to say that's okay. So what I want to do now is I'm going to check the voltage on each of these little chips and see what they've got. So I'm going to move the meter over here. Right, so hopefully you can see the meter. Now, I'm going to assume that these, all these little 8-pin chips here are op-amp chips. I mean, they might not be, but... I'm just going to assume they are, so... I'm going to start with this chip down here. 
with pin 8 that should be where our positive voltage is let's see what we got okay we've got 7.9 let's check pin 4 we should have the exact opposite of that uh, we more or less do alright let's check this one pin 8 that seems a bit low that's only 6.64 let's have a look at pin 4 see what voltage we've got there if I can just get that in there okay about the same voltage but negative let's try this chip 7.9 let's try the negative voltage or assume this is where a negative voltage will be and yep that seems in order okay what about the Dolby decoder I don't exactly know where the positive and negative voltages on this chip will be but I'm going to assume that pin 30 is where the positive goes so I'll just try to get that on there and measure the voltage Okay, we've got nothing there. Okay, let's go over to chip one. It's usually the usually the pins in the corner that have the power. And uh, nothing there either. I mean, it's not always the pins in the corner, but most of the time it is. All right, we've got 7.9 volts going into that side. So is this side going to give us our negative eight volts? Uh, yes it is. Alright, so these four chips, we know these four chips are getting power. Let's just have a look at this little one in the corner here. Let's see, pin 14. We've got our 7.9 volts. So, will we have on pin 7, will we have negative 8 volts or whatever it was? If I could just get my meter on there. And uh, yes, we do. Alright, I'm going to go and check all the other chips and see if they're all getting appropriate voltages as well. Alright, I think it's time for a little bit of signal tracing. I've tested that all the chips are getting power, and they are. Now, I believe this little chip here is the playback amplifier or the playback preamplifier anyway so I've made a crude signal chaser lead I've just got a capacitor here connected to this jack here which is going over to the tape deck that I'm using as an amplifier so if this chip is giving us any output at all we will be able to hear it so pin 7 should be an output and pin 1 should be an output so I'm just going to put that on there and see if anything happens. Not hearing anything through the speaker, but... Okay, I heard a little crackle through the speaker there, so I'm going to play a tape. Is that connected there? And see if we get anything. Oh, we do! Okay, well, that was playing. Okay, not through its own amplifier, but we were picking the signal up off that chip and it was coming through. Okay, I'm going to check pin 1, which should also give us some sound. Let me just stuff that in there. I don't know how well you can hear that, but at least the playback preamp appears to be working. So it doesn't appear to be getting anywhere else. I guess the next thing to do would be to check the buffer. I'm not sure if this is an op amp or not, but I'm going to try the same thing with that and just see if any signal comes through. So, up there. Oh, 
Well, I can hear something very, very faintly coming through there. Let's try pin, I think it was pin 7. Again, I can hear something, but it's very, very faint. I don't know if it's supposed to be like that or not, but... Alright, now before my camera battery runs out, let's just see if our little Dolby decoder is giving us any output. Now, we should have something on pin 25. It should be... This is pin 25 right here. Is that pin 25? 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25. There seems to be a voltage rail there. Well, it's definitely getting through the Dolby decoder. That was coming out rather loud. I didn't realise just how strong signal was going to be from that. Let's just um, just turn the tape, um, turn that reel to reel down a little bit. Well, I'm sure it's not all over. So, as far as the playback amplifier is concerned, all of this is working. This is amplifying, this is passing the signal, this is processing, it's doing all it should do, so what we've got to figure out is why that none of that is getting into the line output, why none of that is getting into the display, and why the tape stops after several seconds. We've established that the playback signal is getting through the Dolby decoder chip, but where that signal goes from there, I have absolutely no idea. So I will have to take the main circuit board out, and my battery's all 